Thank you so much for tuning in to another Moments with me, Makiba Evans. Whether you are watching live or you are going to check us out later, I want to thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to have a conversation with myself and my guest today, Nikki. Today we are going to be talking about sexual education, which is something that we all need, even as adults. We're going to um, share a little bit of information with you today on how you can protect yourself properly, um, a conversation piece that you can have with your children to make you and them both comfortable. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a few statistics here that I'm going to read to you because this is not my area of expertise. Although I do have six sons, clearly I didn't use any contraception for those. But <laughs> now in the United States, we have the highest rate of teen pregnancy in the developed nations. But at this point in time, teen pregnancy is down because we had a great president that made sure that Planned Parenthood was available to those who needed it. And we will continue to need it, but we'll talk about that maybe. Um, while teen pregnancy rate is down, sexually transmitted infections are up. Um, there is no evidence that abstinence education is effective. 15% of 15 year olds say that they did not use um, contraception when they had a contraceptive when they had their first sexual experience. Um, and I didn't realize this, but sex education is not something that is taught in all states to children. I've lived in Nevada and Georgia, and I remember signing forms for my children to get that education, but I wasn't aware that that's not something that's mandatory in every state. So, Nikki, how are you doing today? Oh, good, Akiva. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, I have a few questions that I did have people um, shoot me that they wanted to ask of you and us so we could talk about it. What is the most effective method of contraception and why? So, I think, first of all, I want to talk about the definition. So, I'm not going to talk about not having sex. Um, Everybody knows if you don't go out in the rain, you won't get wet. So I'm, I'm not even gonna talk about that. If you don't have sex, the chances of you getting pregnant are zero. Got it. Um, so I'm gonna talk about if you are having sex in a sexual relationship, um, you may have sex in the future. Um, the most effective methods of contraception. So I would say there's three or four sort of categories. Um, so permanent um, contraception. So those are the methods like um, tubal ligation, which is having your tubes tied, a woman having her um, fallopian tubes tied, um, vasectomy, which is basically a male tubal ligation. A man has a tube called a vas deflex, and they burn it, clip it, so that the sperm cannot make the leap over when he ejaculates. Okay. Um, so those are pretty permanent. There are procedures to get those reversed. They are not very effective having them reversed, so they are basically permanent. Um, the most permanent for a woman is a hysterectomy. That is when you have your entire uterus um, removed with or without your ovaries. So that's also very permanent. Now, the most effective non-permanent versions of birth control contraception are your IUDs. Um, so that's an intrauterine device. There are lots of different kinds out there if you um, don't mind having a hormone. There are the, that's the Mirena that has a hormone on it. There are also the Copper T and the Paragard that don't have any hormone. Most of those last somewhere between three to 10 years. Um, and it just depends, you can make that choice. If you know you might wanna have children five years from now, you might wanna choose something like a Mirena, go in for 15 minutes, get, the, get it placed at the end of five years, get it taken out. And most women's fertility returns immediately. So, so don't think, oh, I'm gonna get it taken out a year early. Maybe I won't get pregnant. You, you really, it's, it's there doing its job every day, and you need to, to be, you know, thinking about that. And then 
Um, one other method, which is not, uh, which is pretty effective, it's um, gone in and out of popularity, is um, a device that they put in your arm. So it used to be called Norplant. Um, it was three rods, lasted for five years. Now there is a version of it out on the market called Nexplanon. It's one rod, lasts for three years. Put the rod in your arm, it lets out hormones all over your body, keeps you from um, getting pregnant. And most of that works by making you not ovulate. So if there's no egg present, you can't get pregnant. Well, how does the, uh, I had a um, copper IUD, which is non hormonal. Mm -hmm. So how does that so an IUD is a, for, for trying to be simple, it's a T-shaped, um, my hands are in no way, shape, or form <laughs> the size of a copper IUD. I'm just giving you this for shape. It's a very small T-shaped mm -hmm. instrument that they put in your uterus. Um, copper actually um, comes off the device, just leaks off the device the way it would anywhere. Copper and sperm do not mix. Okay. Um, so sperm dislike copper um, and so the device that's in your uterus basically telling your uterus there's something already here mm -hmm. um, I like to tell people one of the great facts of um, life is you actually can't get pregnant while you're pregnant um, and so it just basically fools your uterus into thinking that there's something already there and the copper actually leaches out and kill and basically is anti sperm it, it's a spermicide it does not like sperm sperm don't like copper at all that's a form of contraception, spermicide. It, it is a version <laughs> of contraception. Uh, how I like to describe, I don't suggest that anybody use it as okay. their main ver version of birth control. And, and it's very ineffective by itself. It has about a, it's about 50-50. I don't like to flip coins on my contraception. So um, one of the things is spermicide comes out like toothpaste or lotion in a tube, it's a crane. Um, the inside of your body is 98.6 degrees. If it were 98.6 degrees outside right now, we'd be in shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops. So the cream actually melts, dissolves, turns into basically very liquidy. Um, and the liquid is probably running out while the sperm are running in. Um, and there's really no barrier, and there's no way to kill um, as many sperm as it needs to. If you were in a lab and you take the spermicide, you put it in a little dish with the sperm, it will kill the sperm. There's, there's no doubt. But it just in the mechanics of actually using it for sex um, and during sex, it is not, it, it would not, I would not trust my own contraception <laughs> to spermicide. And I don't, I actually have a Mirena IUD. Um, I've had one for um, going on 15 years now. So I'm on my third one. Yeah. How is that? In, well, when I had my taken in, mm -hmm. it was okay. Mm -hmm. When I had it taken out, it was a little different. Right. Well, I guess it doesn't compare to pregnancy though. To go right. on labor. I, 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 right. I like to say I was I was in, I had one child that was in labor for twenty four hours. Um, I have there, it's ten minutes of discomfort right. that I felt. <laughs> And just really mild discomfort where I took a couple of ibuprofen and I went back to work is in no way in comparison to uh, that 24 hours of back labor. <laughs> Never, mm -mm, mm -mm, not again. Thank you so much for that. Very in depth. <laughs> no problem. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I, I feel like there's a lot more to talk about, but those are the ones that are the most effective. Mm -hmm. Those are the most effective. Something I would trust my own self with. And one thing I actually meant to say, and I'm sorry. For women whose partner or someone you're with has told you that he has had a vasectomy, um, number one, I would always check. Um, this is documentation. This is documentation. <laughs> the second thing is if you know if you or your husband, your partner, he has a vasectomy, he is not immediately infertile. So men have an uh, actual organ that s stores about three months worth of sperm. So he's actually not. Um, his sperm count doesn't go, is not lowered until about after three months. So you need to be using another form of birth control in that three months after um, he's had his vasectomy. Um, and I'm a big fan of vasectomies. Um, I, they're cheaper than a tubal ligation. Men do not have to go um, under anesthesia. Women do. It's cheap. They go into the office, get a local anesthetic, sit on an ice donut for a day, and go back to work tomorrow. That that really is really easy. Whereas Women have to go under general anesthesia for the most part. 
and there is a longer recovery time and higher cost. Okay. Oh. Um, no, I was about to say something. I'm not going to The penis is not even I, in the I, sterile field. I, was I know a lot that. of men are very nervous about having anybody mess with that area, right. um, but literally the, the penis is not actually even in the sterile field. They actually make an incision on the back side of the testicle, actually closer to his bottom, and that's where they go in, do the small incision, cut and burn the two, and sew it back together. Like It's actually at the bottom. The penis is not even seen or even in the sterile field at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. While we're speaking about men, <laughs> how will a man know that he has a sexual transmitted disease? So the question, is, the answer to that question is really, he may not ever know unless somebody lets him know. Um, so, so one of the um, things is men's urethra, the tube that goes through their penis, they actually pee out of it and sperm ejaculates out of it, is, is a long tube. So it's not um, often as effective as, as ours is. Our tube is actually much shorter. Um, the opening to the bladder. So it depends on the sexually transmitted disease. Some tra some sexually transmitted disease actually have no symptoms for men. Understand that there are not symptoms for HIV, um, and HIV will kill you. Um, their chlamydia is actually pretty quiet in men. Like they actually don't actually have a lot of symptoms. Gonorrhea is one just because of the nature of the disease of the bug that actually causes gonorrhea. Um, it um, also can have some problems um, for men, and they can have some symptoms. So what's the normal symptom is uh, it burns with urination. That's because the, um, the bugs have made a little scar on the inside of his urethra, and it's causing him a problem. So that's one of the issues. There are also some um, sexually transmitted diseases like herpes that will have a skin lesion. So then he'll be able to see skin on the outside of his penis, most likely. Um, HPV, which causes genital warts, there might be um, a wart on on the penis at some point. So it depends on the disease. There's not a short answer to that, but oftentimes there may be no symptoms. And so he could be passing um, that on to his partner or partners um, unknowingly. I remember a rap song back in the day where they talked about dripping. So is that not real? So the dripping is generally just a, I think what I understand from dripping is it's hard to stop the flow of urine. Um, and so that drips and also gonorrhea especially um, and this happens it's much more common in women but gonorrhea actually and Trichomoniasis actually causes like a frothy pink or green um, the discharge. discharge, and so you can be dripping discharge out of your penis or your vagina. Well, I think we did a great job today. Thank you so much for volunteering your time. No and Nikki is volunteering. You know, I talk a lot about giving back. This is not her profession. This is. Uh, her desire to want to get out and educate. And one of her, in her past lifetime, when she was a younger lady, she was going to go to med school. <laughs> she was going to be a doctor. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love but it. that didn't happen for her. So she had a plan A, B, C, you know, we do whatever it is that we need yeah. to do yeah. to yeah. make our lives the best place that we can for ourselves and our loved ones. And this is her way of giving back. She volunteers. And I knew that she did that. I knew that she likes me. And she came and she sat down in front of this Facebook Live and listened to this loud man over here talking about whatever. And he knew we were over here doing something. He didn't, he didn't leave and came. He was just still loud. Though. But thank you so much for your patience. Um, and that's my pleasure. I, re I really um, enjoy doing health education. If you have questions to ask Nakiba, please, you know, chat them in. And um, we'll get answers and can put some resources up so that folks can learn more and help themselves. Yes, we have to be responsible. You guys want to be here on this planet as long as we can to vote in four more years and then two more years to get rid of the teammates that are supposed to help the president but may not be. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going so far yeah. to the left and the right. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in.
I am Makiba Evans. You can find me on Twitter at Makiba Evans. I am on Instagram at Makiba Evans. I'm on Facebook at Share Our Love Light, which is um, one of my new journeys in life is to help people get out there and share what it is that they know that they're willing to open up enough to share. Um, I would be Makiba Evans at Facebook too, but Makiba Evans is another one of me. Can you believe it? Um, and she said, I'm going to call her though. Makiba, I'm going to see. No, I just want <laughs> So thank you so much. Like I said, whether you're tuning in live, if you're going to see me later, I appreciate you. Um, please share. That's definitely a way to get our message out there because everybody needs to know how to protect themselves sexually and responsibly. So once again, enjoy your day. Um, continue to be a part of the movement, you guys. If there's something out there that you feel like needs your attention and you don't feel like you can do anything about it, you can. Just open your mouth. We can Google anything else. Just find somewhere for you to help, for you to lend your energy and your time. And if you're not ready to get out there, if you have a couple coins, there are many organizations that will take your donations. So thank you so much again, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.